All right, so these circles are marked every 30 degrees and every 45 degrees. So 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90, and so on. And then you come back to zero or 360. And then the 45 would go here. Here we'll have 135, 225, and 315. And we want to find what's called A cross B, and there's two methods for doing it. So one difference between the dot product and the cross product is that the dot product outputted a scalar single number for every dot product but the cross product outputs a vector which makes it a little bit substantially more complicated than the dot product so we need a vector But we can find the magnitude fairly easily with a simple formula. This will be the magnitude of the cross product. The formula is that the magnitude of A cross B will be given by the formula A B sine of theta. So whereas the dot product was AB cos theta, and it took into account how parallel the vectors were, like the more parallel they were, the, the more positive the dot product would be. In this case, the cross product takes into account how perpendicular the vectors are. So the more perpendicular they are, the larger the cross product magnitude will be. So for this first one, the lengths of A and B are just one, because it's a unit circle. So we would want one times one times the sine of the angle between them. Okay, that's the theta between. And the theta between here is gonna be 120. So we'll put that here and calculate that. So A cross B magnitude is 0 0.866, which is radical 3 over 2. But then there's more to do when it comes to the cross product you have to find a direction for the result. And so one way to, to do that is what's called the right-hand rule. All right, now in the right-hand rule, you're supposed to point your pointer finger in the direction of one of the vectors, and then point your middle finger toward the other vector. All right, now that's a little tricky to show in two dimensions. So I think what I'll do is on the side here, I'll just draw it. I'm going to take that problem we were working on and just sort of like lay it down as if it was on a table in three dimensions. So what we had was we had a piece of paper with the problem on it. And the problem was a unit circle. And these would be like the legs of the table. We had one vector, A, which pointed to the right. And then we had another vector, B, which pointed up at an angle. 
So that's A. And that's B. We also had an X and Y dimension. I guess that's positive Y. And this would be positive X. Just like it would be in math. So now what you have to do is you have to point your pointer finger in the direction of A. This is all part of the cross product. So pointer finger points this way. And this is called the right hand rule. So you have to do it with your right hand. That's critical. If you do it with the left hand, you'll actually get the opposite results. <laughs> All right, so pointer finger goes in the direction of A. And that has to be the first vector in the cross product. Okay, so remember the cross product was A cross B. So the first one is always the pointer. Now for B, we're going to use the middle finger of the right hand. So that means we have to point middle in the direction of B. However, A and B have to stay perpendicular. That's what makes this kind of tricky is you don't really want the middle finger to point at 120 degrees with A. You actually need it to have a right angle. But you want it to point like as much toward B as you can. So I'm going to have it go along the Y axis. And then what happens is you have to keep the thumb perpendicular to both of them. All right, so so this ends up happening. You have a 90 degree angle between the thumb and the pointer and a 90 degree angle between the pointer and the middle and a 90 degree angle between the middle and the thumb is the idea that's B but it's actually the component of B which is perpendicular to A is the idea and then the thumb will tell you the result so this is the result of the cross product. So it would actually be A cross B. All right, so this is a three dimensional type of thing. And so. What ends up happening is we have a third axis here. One which points into the plane of the page and out of the plane. And you know, and out of the plane up toward the sky here. That would be the positive Z direction. And so now we can finally give a direction to our cross product. It's simply gonna be K hat, positive K hat. Okay, so A points in the positive I direction. B is in the plane of the XY plane. There's a component of B which is perpendicular to A, which points in the J direction. 
okay, this would be what some might call like a B perpendicular. Okay, because it's worth pointing out that you could have reorganized the hand so that the middle went this way. But this would have been wrong if you'd made the middle go that way. And let's say you had some other fingers here. And then you had your uh, you had your pointer finger go, and then the thumb would have gone down. See, this would have been a different way of orienting your hand. And so this would be the pointer in the middle and thumb. And so here, the pointer would point in the positive eye direction. The middle would have pointed in the negative y direction. And then the thumb would have pointed in the negative z. But that would have been wrong. See, that would have meant that you would have pointed your middle in this way. But that's super different from what B is doing. Like, but those would have been the two options. Because your pointer and your middle have to stay in the xy plane. Like in the plane that the two vectors are in. So this would have been the wrong way to do it. Now let's write what the final answer would be, though. So A cross B for this one would be that radical 3 over 2 for the magnitude. And then we would just put positive k hat on it. That's all. Just to tell us the, the direction. And that's the final answer for number one. All right. Well, let's try a couple more here. All right, second one says, can we find A cross B for these vectors? The formula is A cross B will equal magnitude of A, magnitude of B, sine theta, but then you have to put a direction on it. And when we don't know what the direction is yet, sometimes people put n hat, which just means that there needs to be a unit vector on there, and we just don't know yet what it is until we analyze it. So this is a length of 1, that's a length of 1. So we'll get 1 times 1 times the sine of the angle between, which is 180 in this case. So these vectors, they aren't perpendicular at all. See, the ones in question 1, they were a little bit perpendicular. And if you take the component of B, which is perpendicular with A, it would look like this. There would, of course, also be a parallel component of B as well. But what we're basically doing is we're finding the multiplication of B perpendicular times A. Like, that's what the magnitude ends up being. Some people will say it could be thought of as an area. If you form an area between that B perpendicular and A, that could also be thought of as the magnitude of A cross B. And interestingly, the area that would have got made between the original vectors A and B is the same. 
So some people will think of it as like an area of a, of a parallelogram. So if you find this area between A and B, that's also thought of as the magnitude of A cross B. But the idea is that here there won't be any of that area because they're not perpendicular at all. And so this is going to be the zero vector. That'll be the result of this one. Has no magnitude and no direction. Alright. So we want to uh, we want to find the magnitude and direction. Let's find the magnitude first. A, B, sine, theta. So it's going to be 1, 1, sine of the angle between, which looks like 60 degrees. So we're going to get radical 3 over 2 again. But what about the direction? So now you got to go back to that example we did. Okay, there's A. And here's B. And so which hand orientation do we want now? Well, we don't want this one anymore. We actually want this one. You see, the pointer finger has to point in the positive x direction. But we need the middle to be pointing more down than up because we want the middle to point along the component of B which is perpendicular to A but that would now point in the negative Y direction and that's B perpendicular right there and so which way does the thumb point? It points down into the table in the negative Z or negative K direction is the idea so now we can give an answer a cross B equals radical 3 over 2 in the negative K in the negative K direction. Or you might see it written as like negative radical 3 over 2 K hat. Uh, I'll do number four just real quick. So, angle between them is 135 degrees. And so, we would want AB sine theta. So that's one, one sine 135 and you know let's attach a direction to it based on the analysis we just did I would again make the final direction negative k hat because a points to the right this time B points at this angle here and so it's like which one of the two would we want well we need the component of B which is perpendicular to A and it has to be 90 degrees with A so the choices would be either up or down but the right choice is definitely down right that would be B perpendicular with A. So again, the answer is going to be negative K hat for our final direction.
So we'll put uh, k hat here and throw a negative out front. So this is going to be negative radical 2 over 2 k hat. Sometimes it'll, it'll be tricky. It may ask for b cross a. And if that happens, you have to orient the hand in a different way. Let me just show an example of that. How about, yeah, right here. It says find B cross A. So now the first one has to be the pointer. And then the middle will be the second one. So that's a little different. So let's find the angle between them. Um, it's 120. You're going to want A, B, sine theta, so we want 1, 1, sine 120, which is radical 3 over 2. But what is the direction? Well, now you got to point your pointer finger in the direction of B and then curl the middle toward A. Okay, so I better, better draw it on the table here. Alright, so B points this way, and A points this way. We want to start things off with the pointer finger pointing in the direction of B. Alright, so that means... You gotta start off with something like that. And then our middle has to go 90 degrees with that. So it either has to go that way or that way, because we've got to have 90 degrees here. And it's like, which one's correct? Well, clearly that one. Okay, we have to head toward the direction of A. Doesn't have to be in the exact direction of A, it just has to be more toward A than not. So, this is B. This is going to be the direction of A perpendicular to B. And then we have to have some other fingers as well. So it would be like okay, and then there's gonna be a thumb involved. Basically, the hand goes sort of like back this way. The thumb points up, <laughs> is what happens in this orientation. So that'll be the result, though, of B cross A now. So it'll be positive K hat. So you're going to find that all these two-dimensional ones are either going to be into the page or out of the page. In this case, the result is out of the page. Alright, hope that makes sense.
So our result here, our result is going to be positive k hat for this one. But if you do the cross product on this guy, you'll find that it's going to be negative k. All right, so we'll have negative one half k hat for this one because it's one one sine thirty. We always use the smallest angle between them and just the mathematical definition of how you do the cross product is an angle between zero and one eighty inclusive. So you don't want like negative angles or angles which are more than 180 just the smallest between them and you don't and you know you don't use any negative magnitudes either the direction is decided by the right hand rule